Hello and welcome to The Secrets of Storytelling with me, Catrice Horsley. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, um, which is all about the most effective and profoundly meaningful way of communicating with people, which is through using stories. So the channel is all about connection and communication. And the um, episode today forms kind of uh, the first of the last section of this series of secrets of storytelling. And it is all about presentation skills. And in this episode, I'm going to cover structure. So how you structure your presentations in the most meaningful and impactful way. The second episode next week is going to be uh, relating to the voice and how we can use it and certain techniques to build um, up interest and depth in our presentations. And the last one will be related to physicality. And this one is not to do with um, digital presentations. This physicality is going to focus um, on being on stage, on owning your stage and owning your space for that time, which I hope will be coming very soon, where we can actually connect with people in the same space, which will be lovely. So before I start, I want to refer to something that I've noticed in a lot of training regarding presentation skills, and that is the omission of passion. So many training courses that focus on presentation are very formulaic. You do this and you do this and you do this and you do this. And it doesn't work that way if you want to really engage with people and move people and uplift people. If you want emotional engagement with them, you also have to be emotionally engaged with your material. And I liken it to a boat on the sea. The sea is your passion. It is what drives people forward, what drives your presentation forward. The boat is your care for either the people in front of you who you are presenting to or for the material that you are presenting for your material, whether that be, you know, about financial systems or whether that be about um, young people's mental health issues. So it's your care for your subject matter. And the rudder is your intellect. Your rudder is um, your choice of words, how you are going to present it in the best way to have the most impact. And in some ways, these three elements fit into our brains and how our brains are developed with the reptilian brain, that passion, that drive, our sensory cortex, and then our higher order thinking skills, our neocortex. So if you, we use all three of these, then we actually fully engage with the brains of other people um, who are listening to us. So without showing your passion, basically the presentation is going nowhere. Remember that human is professional. Being human is also being professional. Do not think that you have to take away some of your humanness in order to be professional. By using your humanness and your emotions, you are far more likely to engage in a powerful and meaningful way with your audience. That was really important to say. So um, the first tip um, to do with structuring your presentations is always to think of your presentation as a story. Think of it as having a beginning, a middle and an end. And you've noticed that I've gone up here for a lot of people um, who are involved perhaps in literacy or teaching, you'll see here the story arch. And basically what this means is in every story, to make it interesting and engaging, you need a little bit of tension and you need the tension to build up, build up, 
build up and then come down. It is exactly the same with your presentation. There has to be some tension in it. And for me, one of the ways of doing that we'll look at next week with your voice and speed and pace of your voice. But the other thing is to do with almost creating these small waves of tension that push and push and push your audience towards the shore that you want them to land on. So I think we have an overarching structure for our presentations, the beginning, the middle and the end. But contained within that are these tiny little waves that build up an arch, building up tension and dropping it down and building up tension and dropping it down and moving the audience forward towards that place that you would like them to be. And one of the really good ways of doing this is through this use of and, but, and so. I could say, um, let me see. I should always think of these things before I start. I don't. I could say, when I was young, I had a speech problem and then that got better. And then I had an interest in storytelling and I told stories to children and I found that I had a bit of a skill for it. And so I decided that I wanted to develop that. You know, that, that's fine. That's basically a short summary of my background. However, if I use the and, but, and so, it would be something like when I was young, I had a speech impediment, but because I went to speech therapy, I overcame that. And then I found that I had a skill um, in telling stories and I love stories, but the best way of me utilizing that was with the young children and the young people that I worked with. So that's what I did. And then I continued to, can you see there's all these like little peaks of interest with the word but so it causes us to go oh what is going to happen next da, 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 da. but and you go but what but what but what happened next so it's a little way um it's a, a little technique for creating interest and snagging the audience's ears to engage with you and we can use the word but and but and but and so but and so but however <laughs> this is um a thing that i use quite often when i'm working with literacy and developing literacy and vocabulary with young people but i also use it in my storytelling techniques and essentially you've got the word hands h-a-n-d-s and you've got your hand do it that way and you've got the word however the word although, nevertheless, despite, and suddenly. You've also got your middle finger, which can be moreover, and you've got your thumb, which can become therefore. So you've got these seven connectives on one hand. So instead of using but the whole time, one can also, when you're developing your presentation and your speech, start to include these other connectives and you'll remember them by the acronym HANDS. So again, it could be when I was young, I had a speech impediment. However, I went to speech therapy classes and I learned how to speak properly, but I wanted to share my passion for stories with young people. So I started to do that, although it was quite difficult for me at first, blah, 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 blah. So you've got your hands, your however, although nevertheless, despite suddenly, suddenly is always a good one. So we've got this idea of always have a beginning, a middle and an end to your presentation put it in the form of a story. Within that overarching one, have all these little points of tension that come up like tiny waves, not waves, waves that push your audience towards the shore that you want them to land on. 
and use repetition and metaphor. If you think of some of the great speeches, I have a dream, there is this repetition of a phrase or a word throughout it. We can do it. Repetition of a word or a phrase throughout it. And what I have done through the whole of this little presentation to you is use the metaphor of the sea, boats, waves, to help make what I'm saying easier to understand, but still as powerful. And I talked about metaphors in the previous episode. I'm not going to say any more because it's going to link into the next episode on the voice and it's going to link into a presentation. But essentially, what you should start to do when you're thinking of a presentation is you need to start to think of where does the story of my presentation start? And if you look back into um, the Vava Vooms and the previous episode of um, The Secrets of Storytelling, which focused on strategic narratives. If you look back at those, you will see that a very good place to start is with you. And then what um, you're having to fight against, you know, the peak, what, what you're going to have to conquer um, and what you want the audience to help you conquer. And that's the coming up tension and you're gonna battle that thing. And then you start to come down towards that big vision at the end. And if within that overarching structure, you can have all those little waves of interest with your and but so's or your and however's so's or your and but therefore's, then that makes it even better. So I will finish there. I hope that was useful for you. I also um, will just say once again that if you want private coaching sessions on a particular presentation that you really want to deliver, please contact me. And um, the email is on the YouTube page. But just for your ears here and now, it is narrative for change at gmail.com and the website is narrative for the number four in the middle change uh, www.narrativeforchange.com so please contact me and have a lovely day the sun is shining in sweden which is wonderful take care and bye bye for now stay curious and stay open and stay Hmm, vulnerable. Bye-bye. <laughs>